All right, integrals, uh, day number four here. We're going to talk about um, Alan Archimedes today. Good old Alan found uh, uh, probably one of the more impressive proofs on how to find the area under the curve if that curve is a polynomial. So let's take a look here and look how does the series converge if the inter integral converges. So... If we look at, if we're analyzing the area under the curve here, A, right? let's call this area A, right? Good old uh, Archimedes said, well, what if I split it into, say, a bunch of rectangles, right? And then he had to make a choice. So he split it into a bunch of rectangles and decided, okay, well, now do I want to do a right edge? Well, that would be an underestimate be an underestimate or do I want to do a left edge well that would be an overestimate so what do I do well basically what he's doing is he's taking each of his y values and some interval and multiplying it by the width of each of those intervals which he decided to make the same smart choice and came up with this underestimate on the right side I know this is on the left side but it's a right it's a right hand sum right because the right side of each of those rectangles is on that curve okay and then decided that if he could squeeze that somehow and do a left edge on the other side that somehow he could pin down this actual value of the area under that curve okay from 1 to n so that's the idea. We're going to get into the proof here in a moment, but first we got to talk a little bit of uh, detail work and syntax. Okay, so the left edge method is, you will never use the left edge method, just FYI. But what does some of this notation mean, and how do we know these things are true? Well, all four of these can be proven true using uh, proof by induction. But let's take, for example, this one. What is this actually saying? Right? What is the sum from n equals 1 to n of i actually mean? Okay. Uh, actually, this should, be, uh, this should be n. Uh, all of these should be n. n squared, n cubed, etc. Okay, so what is that telling us to do? Well, this notation, the summation notation, is saying, well, take and start here at n equals 1, and then increase by 1 unit until you get to, let's say, n here. Right? So we're going to add those up. So if I said to go from n equals 1 to 4, uh, we would just say 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, which the sum would be 10, okay? So that's what that summation notation means. Uh, these four things, as you'll see here in this blue box, will be given to you on any quiz or any test so that you won't have to memorize. Okay, so let's look at what Archimedes was doing then with this left edge method. Okay, so he took this interval from 0 to 1, and he split it into n rectangles, right? Because if I just took one rectangle, that wouldn't be a very good estimate. If I took two, that would be a better estimate. But the more rectangles I take, the better. So what would be the width? Well, the width would be the interval length divided by the number of rectangles. Okay, now what would the heights be? Well, if it's a left edge method, and you'll see why. This is going to get messy in a second here. But our first rectangle would look like that. Our second rectangle like that. Our third rectangle. Our fourth. Our fifth. Our sixth. Our seventh, right? Or however many, up to n. Well, what would this height be? Well, that'd be zero. So that'd be zero over n. It'd be our zero over n rectangle. How about that one? Well, that'd be our 1 over n. So that would be our x value, right? That'd be 2 over n, etc. 3 over n, 4 over n, 5 over n, 6 over n, etc. So our height is going to be the 
this value is some value k, right? Or i, or whatever we decide it is. But it's actually not, right? If I took the sum from k equaled 1 to n of k over n, well, it's really k minus 1, right? Because our that's why right edge is so much better, because right edge will start at k equals 1. Here we're starting at k equals 0. So our heights are going to be k minus 1 over n. That's our x value. And then we plug it into the function. This is the function x squared. So those are our heights. And our area will be built based on a summation. Right? So the area, I'm going to write it down here for extra space, from 0 to 1 will be a sum k equals 1 to n of our heights. Those are all our heights times all of our bases. All of our bases are the same length. But we can make this a really, really good estimate if we took the limit as n went to infinity. And that is our area function for a left-hand sum. How will that be different than the right-hand sum? Well, We'll see on the next page, but I'll make it much, much simpler, okay? And then eventually, we'll get to a point where we have to employ the note over here and utilize this in order to come up with our actual value. Okay, so the right edge sum. Here's the difference between the right and the left edge sum. Number of rectangles, still n. Width, still 1 over n. But now our height isn't going to be k minus 1. It's going to be f of k over n, right? So in this case, that'd be k over n squared. That's an n. Okay, so our area function from 0 to 1 will be the sum of k equals 1 to n of our heights, which would be k over n squared times our widths, which is 1 over n, and the limit of that, ooh, wow, that was wild, as n goes to infinity. All right, so let's attempt one on the next page here. Actually, the page after this one. Uh, actual area will be, to, be between the area of the right edge and the left edge, as we talked about. Um, but if we take this limit as n goes to infinity, we, we can get that right edge close enough to, that, to a point where it's um, exactly what it would be if we integrated. All right, so I'm going to change this for a moment, and I'm just going to go 0 to 2, and you'll see why in a second. Okay, so we've got this function. Number of rectangles is going to be n. Width is going to be 2 over n now, right? It's our width of our interval divided by n. I'm scratching that for a minute. Our heights. Our heights are going to be f of 2k over n, which will be 3 times 2k. Remember, k is our iteration for our right side squared. That will be, looks like, 12k squared over n. So our area from 0 to 2 is going to be the sum from k equals 1 up to n of height, 12k squared over n squared, times width, 2 over n. And we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity. All right, pause it if you need to, and we'll talk uh, in class if you need it. All right, so... I'm going to drop the area from 0 to 2 for a moment and just do some work here. All right, so I want to bring anything that is n-related and any constant out in front. So I'm going to bring that out. My son is watching a video on diggers and tractors and excavators. 24 over n cubed. Yeah, it's really annoying, but I love them anyways. 
Okay, now let's consult what we had on our last page now. Okay, this right here, on the note of four items that I told you you would not have to memorize, came out to, let's see, what was it, n times 2n plus 1 times n plus 1 over 6. All right, so now I have everything in terms of n. So I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of, and watch this, I'm just going to take some and work with, if I'm looking at the numerator here, I'm just going to work with the uh, leading coefficients. All right, I don't really even care. All right, and why can I say that? Well, because as I do a limit at infinity, all that's going to matter is the highest power. And down here I get a 6 and cubed. So what will the area from 0 to 2 come out to equal? Well, the limit of this, as n goes to infinity, you can see that the highest powers are the same. Therefore, I can just reduce. 6 and 24 reduces to 4, so that area would be 8. So then how would I find the area from 1 to 2? Well, to find the area from 1 to 2, what you would do is the area from 0 to 2 minus the area from 0 to 1. Okay, so you would have to done that process all over again for 0 to 1, which isn't that bad. Right? It wasn't that bad. Um, and that would find you the area in the curve from 1 to 2. Now, could I? So I could have confirmed, actually, uh, by... Pardon me. Integral from 0 to 2 of, I think it was 3x squared dx. So you might be saying, why didn't I just do this? Well, that would be x cubed from 0 to 2, which is f of 2 minus f of 0, which is 2 cubed minus 0 cubed, which is equal to 8. So you might be saying, why didn't I just do that? Well, you got to appreciate where he came from, which is Archimedes built this thing. And however, it only works for polynomials. So anyways, um, the area end of a curve, as long as it's a polynomial, can be calculated using this method. All right, that's it for Archimedes lesson two. There are some more complicated examples we can go over in class. Uh, I can also record some of those as well. So have a great day. We'll see you in lesson three.